Hey everybody, it's Brad with another Floriani Total Control U video for you today. And today I'm going to show you how to use a free tool from Microsoft Bing to generate artwork that works really well with the auto digitizer that is built into this program. So let me just show you some examples of uh, designs that I've made using this method that I'm going to show you. Now this is a um, uh, an image of uh, like a punk rock dog with a sewing machine, and I, I think that's basically what the prompt was that I that I asked for. I, I think I said uh, a punk rock dog using a sewing machine. This one is more guarding it. Uh, but the point is that I was able to instantly generate this image from that prompt, and then feed that 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 resulting image into Floriani and have it generate a reasonable looking embroidery design, mostly automatically with with very limited editing on my part. Um, so this was this was one, here's another one that I sewed out. I did this Cthulhu Santa Claus. I thought he came out pretty good. Um, and these designs aren't like, you know, professionally digitized, like super high quality digitized designs or anything, but it's a result that you can get pretty quickly and easily and it, and it's impressive looking especially when you're brand new to the software and you just kind of want to want to get something done uh quickly and successfully these these designs while they're not ideal they're not as good as if if you know we manually digitized them you know shape by shape that would take a lot longer and requires a lot more knowledge to do that so i just want to show everybody a tool that you have to create artwork that works perfectly with the auto digitizer built into this um here's just a couple other ones these ones i didn't actually sew out but this i asked for a frog using a sewing machine made of mushrooms and that was the image that i got and then this is a you know crazy weird eyeball monster using a sewing machine I had to generate all kinds of things using sewing machines, uh, just because I thought that that was an interesting idea. Um, so anyway, let's uh, let's take a look at this free tool that uh, has come out. Um, this is pretty new. Um, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but essentially what you want to do is go to www.bing.com/images/create. Okay, this question mark form gen exp it doesn't need to be there. So if we delete this, we can see. Bing.com slash images slash create. That gets you to uh, where we want to be to try to generate these images. Um, you do need to have a Microsoft account. Uh, they're free. You can just sign up for a free Microsoft account. Um, and you get a number of credits per day uh, to create uh, the artwork. Now, I have 14 left. I believe you start with 15 um, uh, every day. And when you run through all 15, that doesn't mean you can't make more art, but it takes a lot longer to do it. So, um, Anyway, so this is the free one. All right, this is anybody can use this. It doesn't cost any money, uh, and you can use it to generate your artwork. Now, if we go in and we just tell it, like, I want a picture of Cthulhu wearing a Santa Claus outfit, that's not going to get us artwork uh, that's going to work for the auto digitizer. Because when we're using our auto digitizer in the Floriani software, it needs to be a uh, cartoony type artwork, like comes up automatically when we open up the the wizard we want artwork that's like this that's very very clear simple basic shapes but you know if we don't want this gingerbread man or this uh holly or this snowman or whatever we want something else um you have to go find it somewhere and i've got a video on how to use google to to find artwork that that works for the auto digitizer but you know if so nobody's uploaded a picture of what you're looking for then you're not going to find it um plus you know it, it's easy to select an image that's not going to work right and until you know what to look for it's kind of hard to tell so this method works pretty easily so what we want is we want to search for before we put in what we want we're going to put in vector vector v-e-c-t-o-r vector image with no shading or color gradients okay vector image with no shading or color gradients okay and then you search for what you're searching for so of a an adorable badger wearing a santa hat okay so i want a vector image with no shading or color gradients that's what's going to make it into an image that will auto digitize well and i want it to be of an adorable badger wearing a santa hat and so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and click on create or we could just hit enter and it is going to uh give me a little progress bar and it's generating the image for me okay so 
once this progress bar is full, we're going to get four options to choose from. Uh, usually it's four. There we go. So we've got four options of our little Santa uh, hat wearing badger. And what we're looking for is we want not too much detail. This, this might be a little too much detail. And we want to have as little color gradients and shading as possible. I know we told it not to make any, but it's always going to add some in. But this gets us pretty close. And this little fellow right here, he's pretty cute, and I think he will fit the bill. I think that we'll be able to auto-digitize this design quite well. So what we do is you, you choose the one that you want by left-clicking it, and here it is. I'm going to save this, so I'm going to right-click, choose Save Image As, and just make sure you put it somewhere that you know where it is. I'm putting it in my AI Nonsense folder, and I'm going to call it Badger Santa, and just hit Save. And once we've saved it, we're going to go into our Floriani software and go up to the wizard up here, the little wizard hat. And then when you hover your mouse over this, a flyout menu comes out and just choose the one, it looks like an orange hat, auto digitizing wizard, that's the one we want. We're gonna left click on that and then choose select image. Now you're gonna have to navigate to the folder where you saved the design. Uh, so in my case, I put it in uh, H drive, AI nonsense, and there it is, badgersanta.jpg, there it is. We're gonna left click on that and choose open. Now. We're going to hit next for this next page. Now, the, the, the rest of this process is essentially how you use auto digitizer on this. So I'm going to go through it here with you. But if you already know how to do auto digitizer, boom, you can be off and running and ready to sew out these, these crazy AI artworks um, just like that. So let's, let's talk about how to prepare this uh, image for auto digitizing. Um, from on this page, this is where we can set the size of the image. Right now it's going to be 10, a little over 10 inches by a little over 10 inches, which is pretty massive. Let's say we want to sew this in like in, I don't know, an eight by eight ish hoop. I'm going to set the image size to around six by six. That's plenty big enough. Uh, that's still, that's still pretty massive, really. It's going to be a ton of stitches, but we're going to set it to that. Um, but you can set it to whatever you want. We're going to hit next. All right, and then on this page, we have to, with most images that have a white background, we have to go in and manually change the background to another color because the way the auto digitizer works is it takes whatever color your background is and it just removes it. So if we didn't do anything, we wouldn't have any white on the inside of this little badger and we need to have our white. So we're going to left click on edit image. And what that will do is actually open up paint on your computer and allow you to go in and change uh, change some things around about the design. So if we go and we say, okay, my background color here is white, I need to change this. And what you change it to is any color that is not in the design already. So if I go in here and I say, okay, well, this bright green, that's there's no bright green in my design. So if I use my paint bucket tool here, we can left click somewhere on the background and we just make sure there's not any little spaces that are, uh, you know, like if, if like if this was closed off right here, we'd have to hit there. There's no uh, uh, images or there's no parts that are closed off on this design. So we don't need to do that for this one. Um, he's got a little shadow under him. You know, maybe we want to keep that. But if we don't, you could just make that the same color as the background. OK, now that's not going to be there. Um, and if I change my mind, you know what? I want that after all. I can hit undo right here. Um, now, we want to go in and see if where these different kind of little bit of shading colors are, if those are acceptable to us, if that's how we want it, like how we've got this little reflection on the nose here. Do we want that to be that way? Do we not? If we don't, we can go in and use the color picker and kind of pick what color to actually make it. If we want this to be a different color than, than the rest of it, we could go in and pick this black and fill in the whole nose with black, we lose a little bit of dimensionality there doing that. So maybe we don't want to do that with this one. This particular image really doesn't need a whole lot of editing. Um, maybe I would want to keep an eye on the fact that this color here is very close to black. So if this ends up getting kind of merged in with our black, then maybe we'll do this over again and make this a different, you know, lighter color uh, so that that doesn't happen. But let's just see what, what the result is when we go and, and do this design. So once we've changed our background and we're satisfied that any other edits that we've made are done, we go to File 
and exit and just hit save here. That's going to bring our changes into this. There's not probably going to actually be 13 colors. It does some automatic consolidation when it goes in. So I'm not going to worry about the fact that this has 13 colors in a you know, design that clearly only has five or six colors in it. Uh, and we're just going to hit next here. And on the next screen, if this just just hit next here. Nothing that we do here is going to make anything better. So we're going to hit next here and make sure you have this unchecked, which it will be. Then um, on the uh, the following page, leave the sequencing color and lock stitch on the defaults. Change trim from never to always. Okay, that should really be defaulted to always, I think. And we're going to hit finish. And what this is going to do is it's going to think about it for a minute, and then it will spit out my design. And there he is. There's my little uh, my little uh, uh, badger fellow, and he is an embroidery design. We could sew this out. And I, I was worried about it making this the same color as the black outline. It didn't. Um, we can put it in 3D and take a look at it. And then um, I do notice that uh, we really ought to have this black color really ought to be brought to the front. This should sew out last instead of first. Pretty much the auto digitizer always makes the black uh, lay down first and it pretty much always needs to be uh, moved to the front. The way you can do that is just by selecting the color, left click on the color, and then right click, choose move last. And boom, there you go. Now, now his outlines are nice and bold. Now, by the way, if you're looking at your design and everything is blue, um, chances are that you have a setting set that I don't on mine. In my preferences, that's this gear button right here. I have set under view, uh, uncheck the highlight selection. By default, yours is going to look like this, where um, everything will be highlighted in blue when it's selected. It's a personal preference whether you like that or not. I personally don't really like that. Um, but you know, if you, if you want to turn it off, you go up to the program preferences, view, and put a check, uncheck the check mark next to highlight selection, then it won't do that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so this design, this would sew out and it would look reasonable. Um, you know, would it look better if we manually digitized it? Well, of course it would. It would look better if we sat there and, and you know, carefully chose what order to sew the design out and carefully chose our stitch direction uh, uh, and, and, that kind of thing but this is going to sew out and it's going to look cute it's going to look look you know nice especially for somebody who's new to the software that maybe you know doesn't care about learning to to make the um the designs look perfect you know um if you want a badger with a santa hat here he is <laughs> you know what i mean so let's uh let's play with the um let's play with the uh the ai a little bit more um let's go back to the uh the tab that I had open. I'm going to close this preview here and uh, maybe we want to make um, make a different thing. So instead of uh, an adorable badger wearing a Santa hat, let's say um, let's make a 1980s style logo for a sewing store. <laughs> right and see what we get with this go ahead and 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 have it generate this just just to see okay it's generating notice my coin counter up here is going down with this little lightning coin uh, and then when that gets to the end uh when it gets to zero this is just going to go a lot slower and then it resets the next day now yeah you can pay money and and have to you know have not as as many limitations on it um, but anyway so here we go so there's um there's my little logo that it's made for me. So uh, here we can see that it's generated gibberish under here, but it does have sewing there. So I mean, this is pretty neat um, that it's that it's it's able to create this this neat kind of um, you know uh, just instant artwork that that you're able to bring in and turn into uh, into embroidery really quickly and easily. Um, so there's the there's another um, way to, to do I mean, there's actually a lot of ways to do this. But my I have another uh, uh, image generator that I've been using actually the one that I've been using is uh, chat GPT, which in order to get the access to the um, uh, the the artwork generation, you actually have to pay for it. Um, but <laughs> I've, I've been having a good time playing with this. So I made a different version of this video earlier where uh, I was making these uh, ferrets wearing top hats. Come on, buddy. There it is. 
So uh, I actually digitized these little guys. Um, but this is just another uh, way of doing it. Now this one, if you, um, if you pay to have access to this, you can get 40 generations per hour instead of 15 per day. So if you're doing a ton of this, like you like really, really uh, fall in love with playing with this, um, if you go to chat.openai.com and create an account there, um, you can uh, you can make a chat GPT account. There's a lot of other stuff that you can do with chat GPT, not just make funny pictures to turn into embroidery designs, but it works exactly the same way as far as what you want to say to the software to make the design. So let's see what we get if we make um, uh, an adorable badger. I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, if we go to my creations and select the badger here, I'm going to copy and paste exactly what I put in for this one. I'm going to put into here. So I'm going to, uh, to, to do this, if you, if you do sign up for this, you have to, if you don't already have the DALI in here, you'll have to hit explore and then choose DALI. That's going to show this little DALI thing. DALI is the artwork generator. So I can click on DALI here in my, in my sidebar and I can just, I'm going to paste exactly what I had Bing do. I'm going to hit send message. Now DALI in ChatGPT will only give you two results per query, but like I said, I can do 40 of these an hour. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you're doing a high volume of these, it might be worth uh, doing this. And this also saves all your artwork that you generate. Um, and this was the way that I, that I made the ones that I had sewn out, like my punk rock dog and all that. So here we go, there's our badger. Um, you know, with the with a Santa Claus hat, they are also adorable. They would also sew out really nicely. There is one difference um, between this and the way that Bing generates the, these images, and that is that the artwork that this makes it puts it in a Web.p format instead of a JPEG, which Floriani can't read natively. So it's there's an extra step involved if you're gonna do uh, one of these. So just to show you what that would look like, I'm gonna bring them up, right click them save them. I'm going to save them as Santa Badger 2. And notice this is a WebP file. Okay, that's a, a type of, uh, uh, of of format of image that you find on websites a lot. It has transparency. They're, they're very uh, small and compact files. So a lot of times websites use these. Anyway, I'm going to save that. The, the thing that makes it challenging though is that Floriani, if I go in and I try to load that image, Floriani doesn't know what to do with a WebP image. So if I go in and I try to use my auto digitizer and I tell it, okay, we're gonna look in my AI nonsense folder, it's not gonna be there because it can't see WebP images. But luckily, um, luckily, uh, our computer has built into it all we need to, to do this. So if I go up to my download tab here in Chrome, uh, I can I can click the little folder next to my Santa Badger 2.webp. Now, if I know where the folder is, I can just go right to it. But this is a shortcut. It takes me right to where it is. And what I can do is right-click it and choose Open with Paint. All right, and if I open it with Paint, that just takes me right to Paint, and I can do File, save as and choose JPEG, that is going to let me save this in a format. Just ignore this. Any transparency, any transparency will be lost. Yeah, that's fine. We say okay. And we can just close this out. Now, when we go and look, I'm going to make a new page here in Floriani. Now, when we go and look in our auto digitizer, we're going to select image and then navigate to where my AI nonsense folder is. There he is now because I've converted him to a JPEG. We can open him up and uh, we're gonna go and edit him because he's there's this red is is here in the in the image too kind of I just it's it's too close. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just bring the background to a color that's nothing like anything that's in the design. Uh, and then if I want to go in and you know change any of these color fills, maybe I want to get rid of the, the shadow underneath of them, I can. And then I just exit, save. Next, next, change this from trim, changes from never to always, and hit finish. And then it's going to spit out my design. Okay, and remember, you're pretty much always going to want to move the, um, the first object is going to be black. You want to move that. So I right click it, choose move, last, and that's going to make it so that, you know, my, my outline sews out last. So, 
Um, there, there you have it. I mean, <laughs> it's it's really cool. And then another another thing that's neat is we can actually use our save to sew with this to apply the right settings to make it sew out relatively nicely. Um, by default, when we sew these out, there's no underlay. Look at that, no underlay. Not ideal. Okay, so what we can do is if we go to File and Save to Sew, and then go and choose in here, okay, I'm going to sew this out on a PK knit. Okay, tell it I digitized it. Make sure you put a check mark next to new style settings. What this is going to do is it's going to set the proper underlay, change my density, all different kinds of things it's going to do uh, to make it so that this will sew out a little bit nicer. Now, I may you may have seen in other videos of mine that I don't really like the save to sew, but when you're auto digitizing is different than if you are manually going in and and placing all your stitches you know if you're auto digitizing then probably the save to sew knows better than you do <laughs> what to do so we're gonna go ahead and 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 make it do it i just made sure i put the check mark there and what happens is in addition to creating a version of the design that has been optimized for the fabric that you choose it teaches you how to go in and hoop the the item what type of stabilizer to use um, and it tells you okay you should be using a size 11 chrome embroidery needle um, you know if you don't want to use heat and gone it's telling me down here I can use a water soluble and if I don't know how to use any of these uh, products like if I don't know how to use a fusible stabilizer I can click on here and watch a video tutorial on exactly how to get into and use these things so that's really really nifty um, and uh, yeah, so so I do I do recommend uh, using the save to sew on these because it will make it sew out a little bit nicer for you. Um, and I'm gonna hit finish here, and it will prompt me to save it. Okay, we we'll call him Badger, right, or whatever we wanna we wanna call him, and that can now be gone and sewn out. Now we could also optimize this. Like, let's say that we don't like the way that his eyes are layered in here we could go into our sequence view in the white so you see how his, his eyes what i mean is his eyes are behind the black we might not like that so if we want we could go in and find his eyes there's one and there's the other one and then move these two sections i've, I've held down control to select multiple objects i can now right click these move last and now they're going to be on top okay so you can go in and play with the layering to make it as good as possible right and 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 that will improve the way that your design ultimately looks um so like you know if we're looking okay well i kind of feel like this white here ought to be ought to be on top too it, and you can you can do that so uh you just play with it in the sequence view in here so there's a lot of fun things uh that that you can do uh and if we sew it out watch if i move this we can see you see how it put that underlay down this time what that's going to do is it's going to number one it's going to help you not see through the stitches and number two it's going to attach the fabric to the stabilizer so um if we look at my uh this guy you see how you can see right through this fill here that's because there was no underlay under him and it just you know it didn't come out very good um so doing that save to sew would have made this guy look better um and uh, you know, I just it didn't occur to me to do it before I sewed him out. But anyway, I just I thought that that was a really neat uh, way to use the AI tools uh, to to get us artwork that works with the software. You know, I I was thinking like, boy, it would be cool if that were somehow to be integrated in like an embroidery software. You know, where you could go into the auto digitizer and say, okay, I want a image of whatever, and have it not only generate the image but also apply the auto digitizing step to it in one go i think that would be really really cool um and uh, so i just wanted to share that with you guys um you know some some designs that it spits out are going to be better than others and so you may need to iterate like if i go in here and you know there was something i didn't like about these like maybe um maybe i want them to uh you know have make sure it's got a body or i don't know let's see make him uh maybe uh, a full santa suit like so i can say here i can say uh give him a full santa suit right and it's gonna regenerate 
and uh, and and make a new pair of images here. Now this is in ChatGPT, but I could do a similar thing in Bing, uh, where I can say, all right, with the same starting line, I want to have a full Santa suit, right? So let's see what it does, just just to see, because I mean it's it's really kind of addictive playing with this. All right, so here we go, same deal, but he's full-bodied with a Santa suit. So I could, again, I mean, I could take one of these and save it and auto-digitize it and it would be adorable. So anyway, um, I hope that uh, you guys had fun uh, seeing this and I hope that you go and play with it. I mean, especially the Bing one. It's totally free. There's no <laughs> there's no risk. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.